Many people believe mangrove forests are rich ecosystems that can protect the coastline. But researchers have observed that artificial cultivation of foreign mangrove tree species can actually harm estuaries and threaten human safety. They can even destroy creatures that depend on these mudflats. In the beginning of December, the Xinjiang city government began clearing a large area of mangroves in the Xiangshan wetland. So are mangroves ultimately beneficial or harmful? Well, let's find out in our Sunday in-depth report. Many believe that mangroves are part of a precious natural landscape providing a home for fiddler crabs, mudskippers and other creatures in a wetland estuary. In fact, mangroves may actually be harming the ecological environment. Two years ago, the mangrove forest along this river was quite dense, reaching one to two stories in height and blocking the mouth of the river. Two or three years ago, this 60-meter-wide river was covered with mangrove forests, leading the river to shrink to just five meters in width. With the mangrove forest blocking the river's flow, residents face the threat of the river flooding. At the time of these plantings, we did not know what kind of impact this would have on the local ecology. We simply thought that planting trees would be a good thing, and as these mangroves began to grow, we witnessed many negative effects. For example, if there was heavy rain and a high tide, the mangroves would stop the water and prevent it from flowing. The mangrove wetland also created another headache for nearby residents, becoming a breeding ground for biting midges. This coastline has a lot of areas where fresh water drains into the ocean, but these drainage areas can easily be covered with moss. This leads them to be breeding grounds for biting midges. And when our staff cleared this area, they together with visitors came away with lots of bites. According to a survey by Xinju Society of Wilderness, the Xiangshan wetland had been planted with a type of local mangrove, Candelia obovada. Though it was only in 1997 when another type of mangrove tree, Avicennia marina, was planted on a large scale that the situation truly got out of hand. Candelia have branches that grow straight up and don't have such a thick trunk layer, so air and sun can shine on the beach. This allows for an abundance of a form of algae called diatoms, making the mangrove forest a suitable habitat for striped fiddler crabs. As for Avicennia marina mangroves, their roots are more dense and are not suitable for crabs because they have no way to dig naturally. They have no choice but to leave the environment. The wetland habitat of this crab has been destroyed by this mangrove planting. This led Sinju Society of Wilderness in 2013 to eradicate these mangroves. At that time, the most important consideration for us was that our Shangshan wetland's most valuable species was the Taiwan fiddler crab. The mangroves spread very quickly and took over the intertidal crab habitat. If we did not try to think about the mangrove, then this fiddler crab may disappear from northern Taiwan. While cutting down trees seems to run counter to the Society of Wilderness's image, its members were comforted by the fact that the mangroves in the Xiangshan wetlands were in fact a non-native species. Every natural thing must have its function to exist. If this mangrove forest is planted in the wrong place, it won't bring beneficial environmental benefits. In fact, only Jilong Bay and Gaoxiong Bay had native mangrove species. However, the construction of ports in Jilong and Gaoxiong led to their disappearance. And all mangroves in Taiwan today are actually non-native planted species. According to research by Zhongxing University professor Chen Ming Yi, freshwater mangrove estuaries were in fact planted after Taiwan retrocession. This indicates it was probably done to prevent flooding and the advance of seawater on the embankment. There's also the theory that the mangroves were to be cut down as firewood and used as fuel. In 2015, the Sinju municipal government budgeted 15 million NT dollars for the large-scale clearing of the mangroves from the wetlands. Unfortunately, these mangroves are not just located in Sinju. Here is Zhanghua's Fangyu and Arlene River estuary. It contains more than 20 hectares of mangroves. 
Local governments have planned to make it a nature reserve, but mangroves are spreading almost out of control. Thirty years ago, this small area of planting occupied less than a hectare, and now you can see it has spread to 20 hectares or more. Central Taiwan has no native mangroves. They should not have been artificially planted because there are no natural competitors. They therefore expand quickly and threaten native species that have no way to survive. Early on, many scholars said the mangroves needed to be cleared, but some plant biologists objected and felt they should be allowed to grow naturally. They have now grown completely out of control. In 2014, Tsai led a group of volunteers to engage in the experimental removal of mangroves. However, the speed of their clearing efforts could not keep up with the pace at which these trees grew. This led them to appeal to the government for help. Without this support, native species won't be able to win their battle against the invasion of foreign species in these estuary mudflats.